Welcome to church this morning. We're so glad you're here. Thanks for joining us. We're jumping into a three-week series today that's going to lead up to our Christmas series called Unwrapped. And this three-week series is called Stronger. We're going to take a look at just three weeks and how our faith your faith makes you strong enough to face anything, how it makes you stronger. We have a ton of stuff going on, and uh, we are just growing as a church. So remember that love makes room, whether you're talking about where you sit on a Sunday morning, whether you're talking about uh, the seats you sat around your dining room table. If we say we love people, then we make room for them, and it's just so exciting to make room for you and your friends and your family Uh, I'm just blessed to be hanging out with you this morning. Let's pray, and we're going to get right into it. Dear God, we thank you for this morning and the opportunity to worship you. And as we jump into your word, we pray that you'd help clear the distractions from our hearts so that we could hear and see you. We don't need to hear and see me. In fact, we are not good at being gods in our own lives. We need you. We come here from all different places in life. Some of us, things have been going awesome. Some of us, it's hurt lately. But we claim the promises that you have for us, that you'll meet us right where we are, that you love us right where we are in the midst of our brokenness, in the midst of our rebellion, in the midst of our pain, in the midst of our circumstances, and you call us to something greater than we could imagine, bigger than we ever thought of asking for, a life that's full and abundant. Would you help us catch a glimpse of that this morning? Would you help us catch a glimpse of who you are this morning? Because that's what we need. Would your spirit work in this place and in our lives, in my heart? We thank you for the cross and the empty grave. Without that, we have nothing. In Jesus' name, amen. Sometimes I wish time would stand still. Have you ever been in a space that was so good that you just wish it would last forever? I don't know, maybe it was that moment when she was walking down the aisle to you and you don't want to admit it to anybody, but you teared up and you felt that lump in your throat. And it's just one of those moments that for a couple seconds, It was so beautiful that you didn't want to leave that space or that time. You just wish you could stay there forever. You wish time could stand still. Maybe it was that moment when all that hard work that you put into your job or all that hard work you had put into your career finally came to fruition and you got the job you hoped for and they they. They told you as you sat there, well, you are our person for this. You are amazing. We can't wait to bring you onto this team. And in that moment, that satisfaction, ah, it was just a moment you wanted to savor and cling to forever. You never wanted it to change. You just wished for a little bit that time would stand still. Maybe it was that middle, middle school dance. You had been crushing on that girl hard. Sending notes that you weren't sure would ever get there through your buddies who couldn't get anything right anyway. And then at that dance, she walked over to you, grabbed your hand, and you trotted out on the floor to awkwardly dance to some boys to men song. Now that I, you know what I'm talking about. Maybe it was that moment at the roller roost when you skated around in your stonewashed blue jeans and neon shirt. You even put a headband on and you thought, everybody's watching you and this was your moment to skate backwards and do your tricks and you had everybody's attention just like time. I wish it would stand still. By the way, I'm grateful that those moments don't stand still. Maybe it was a moment when a child entered into the world and you just observed this miracle you had thought about. You didn't know what it was going to be like. You, you went to the hospital with fear and trepidation and then all of a sudden there this child was and you just wanted time to stand still. That's one of my moments. When my first child, who's now a teenager, came into this... That made me sound old. 
Every week I make mistakes, and that was one of them. And, and, and there she was, and you were just in that space, and n- nurses, God bless the nurses taking care of you and telling you what to feed and when to feed it and how to do this and how to do that, and you're, Josh, you're swaddling this poor child wrong. That's not how it goes, and then I wanted time to stand still, but time never stands still, and eventually they shuffled me out of the hospital, and I was like, I don't want to leave. I want to stay there. Like, I don't, how much do you feed this cut? You didn't give me, where's the, what's the menu? How do, what, when do I know they're full? When do I not know they're full? I don't, I don't even know if I know how to change the diaper right. What, what if something happens to Jen and I can't get a hold of her? Come on, you can't kick us out so soon. Can we stay a week? Can we stay another week? <laughs> it's one of those moments that I wanted time to stand still, but time never stands still because life's a journey. And we're all on it. And the direction you're heading on your journey makes all the difference in the world. Especially when it comes to facing challenges and hardships. And and by the way, it doesn't matter what journey you're on or where you're heading. Your, Your life will, your journey will always include hardships and challenges. And the direction you're heading You see, that provides you with the purpose and the meaning and the strength to get through whatever you face on your journey. Life's a journey, and I don't have to emphasize it to you because you've lived it. Life is a broken journey with great successes and big failures, moments of hope and love that you just want to stand still and then crushing moments with surprises that you hoped never would apply to your life. Life's a journey and sometimes it's a journey full of obstacles and in Psalm 84 you have someone talking about his journey. This is a famous psalm and if you never heard of it that's okay. It's it's a song that songs have been written about and People have been recited. It's just a a beautiful psalm about God and the journey we're on. And while often the beginning of this passage is emphasized, verses 1 through 4, what I want to talk about are these amazing verses that often get skipped past or not as much time in in the sermon or the talk. And those verses are 5 through 7. But can I just read this psalm to us in, in its whole? It's short. It won't take long. And, uh, and then we'll talk about it. The psalmist wrote Psalm 84, How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. It's talking about the temple, the place where he went to meet God, the place where he worshipped and felt God's presence. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. My soul yearns, it even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart And my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home and the swallow a nest for herself where she may have her young, a place near your altar. Lord Almighty, my King and my God, blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. Blessed, and then these verses, like lock into these verses. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The autumn rains also cover it with pools. They go from strength to strength till each appears before God in Zion. This psalm was a song written by a Korhorite Levite. Now that's a crazy word that just describes a group of people. And this group of people, literally their job was to keep, to be the gatekeepers, the doorkeepers of the temple. The the place where people would go and worship God and make their sacrifices and and make their offerings to God and, and a place that they associated with meeting with the presence of God. This dude was a gatekeeper at that 
temple. And what's even more amazing about this story is the Kohorite Levites had a bunch of jobs, including leaving, leading, leading worship. And this was written during, during the, uh, the, one of the biggest and greatest revivals in all of, like, church was booming, right? Like, this was, like, the time to be the gatekeeper at church. This was the time to be the, the doorkeeper. This was the time to lead the songs, to write the songs, because everybody is all like, woohoo! Like, not just that, that, should I clap or should I not clap, right? On a Sunday morning. <laughs> this was like, let's just go crazy. Who cares what anybody thinks? It's going off in here. This was the time, and this Korhorite Levite that penned this song, this phrase, he was on a journey, and that journey had these moments that he's reflecting on that were so good. He's like, man, I just take me back to church. Kind of like you all this morning at 7.30. You're like, wake up. I don't know what to do for the next half hour. Can I go early? Like, let's just get there. He was so pumped up for church. And as he's going through a difficult part in his life, you see, he was obstructed from going back to the temple. He, he couldn't get there right now. And so he sets his mind on this time and this place that was so meaningful and important to him. He says, man, how lovely is the place God dwells. How amazing, my soul, it longs for, it even, it even faints to be back in that place where life was so good. But he couldn't go back. And they don't know why he couldn't go back. Maybe it was because he lived on the other side of this river called the Jordan River and natural circumstances, the amount of rainfall that life had seen prevented him from going back to the temple to be a gatekeeper and worship leader. Maybe he fell off a ladder while hanging drywall in his <laughs> basement and busted his wrist and needed surgery and he couldn't go back when he needed to and wanted to go back the most. Maybe, it was, maybe, it was, maybe he was exiled and wasn't, was forbidden to go back. Maybe it was a sickness or an illness, but for whatever reason, an obstacle popped up in his life and interrupted a journey to the place he wanted to go most. I mean, this was where he wanted to go. This is what he'd want to be doing. This is where he felt like he needed to be. What about you? Where are you going? What are you looking for in life? Where, where do you feel like you need to be? In your own personal journey, in your relationships, in your professional life, in what, what are, where are you, where is your journey taking you and what are you heading to because the direction your journey is taking you on, it makes all the difference in the world, especially when the obstacles show up. He was, unfortunately, barred by these obstacles. And I think sometimes we experience two kinds of obstacles on our journey. And, and sometimes those journey, that journey is interrupted by an external obstacle that we don't have a lot to do about. We're just suffering at, at the consequences of something outside of ourselves that's affecting our life right now. And sometimes it's internal. It's just an internal obstacle that we can't get by, a way of thinking a bitterness in our heart we can't get past. Sometimes the obstacle is external and sometimes the obstacle is internal. But whatever obstacle you're facing on your journey, I got some stuff for you this morning. Are you ready for it? Don't stop. Even though this guy couldn't go back, he didn't stop. And so often in life, the temptation for me when I face an obstacle on my journey is just say, ah, oh, man, Bummer, you know, I guess it was a good ride while it lasted, but things got tough, so I'm done. I'm just going to step back and not move forward anymore, just, just 
lay, yeah, I'm worn out, I'm tired, I'm just going to lay low and, and not disrupt anything. I'm not going to push in. I'm not going to search for what the meaning is in this. I'm not going to search for what the purpose is in this. I'm not going to search for why this obstacle's here or what this obstacle's doing in my life. I'm just going to stop. And some of us, we've hit pause in life in the direction we're heading, in, in searching for more meaning and more purpose. We hit pause just because an obstacle popped up. Don't ship the power in your life to an obstacle when instead you could just hand it over to God who wants more for you than you ever could have imagined. The the second thing I think that happens uh, that I want to say to myself when I hit an obstacle is don't let what holds you back hold your heart back. What's incredible about this is we jump into the verse 5. It says, Blessed are those whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on pilgrimage. He, he couldn't make the journey. He couldn't make the journey back to the place he wanted to be the most, but he set his heart on it. Like if it's stopping you physically from being where you want to be, it doesn't have to stop your heart from going in the direction God wants your heart to go. If you can't get there right now, if you're saying, God, I I feel like you've called me to this purpose, but I can't live it out right now. I don't have the means. I don't have the ability. I don't have the, the, the money. I don't have whatever. You can still set your heart to following God on the journey he has for you. No matter, no matter where you're at, no matter what life looks like, some of the greatest passages in the New Testament were written by this guy, Paul, from jail. See, where you're at physically does not have to limit the influence that you extend, the peace you feel in your heart. The third thing that I think is amazing about facing obstacles is what if, what if an obstacle is there in your life just to set your heart in the right place? What if, what if all the obstacles I face aren't bad? What if some of those obstacles are placed in my life to remind me that, Josh, your heart has to be set in the right place? place that's more important than the direction your feet are going is where your heart is set. And so I have to step back and I have to look at my life and the obstacles I'm facing and the challenges I'm facing and and ask a really hard question. You ready for this? Like, Am I facing this obstacle as a pause so that my heart is set where it needs to be set? Maybe this obstacle was there to remind this Korahite Levite that having his heart set on God is more important than having his body placed at the temple. Maybe this obstacle was there to remind him about how meaningful something is that easily can be taken for granted. Maybe the obstacle is there to just show him that the depth of who God is isn't something that you have to Go somewhere to experience that you can experience it no matter where you are, no matter what you're going on. And maybe he needed to realign his heart with that truth. Sometimes the obstacles you face, they're good because they provide us with a moment to say, is my heart where it needs to be? And sometimes the obstacles are good because they spur in us new dreams for our future. That, that we would not pause enough to figure out and think about if we can just go, 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 and do, 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 do. Are you, are you one of those people? I'm one of those people. Like, I'll just put my head down and go, 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 go. And sometimes I end up in the wrong places at the wrong time because I've just been doing stuff without ever really checking to see if what I'm doing and my dreams for my life are lining up with what God has for me. One time, I walked all the way into Canada 
because I just put my head down looking for a fishing hole and went one step after the other step after the other step. No joke, it was way easy. Like, I'm not even kidding. Like, I, I'm pretty sure I'm Canadian now. I don't know how that works. We have some Canadians in the building, but I left coming back feeling much nicer. Like, I felt just generally peaceful. I was saying, eh, a lot. So I'm pretty sure, like, you just walk through the woods to Canada. You come back a better person. Does that mean I'm a dual citizen now? I don't know. And sometimes those obstacles are there so that we pick our head up off the path of life, off the doing, off the walking, and realign our dreams with where God wants us to go. Did you know it's okay to dream dreams for your kids, for your friends, for their life, for your grandkids? It's okay to dream dreams for you. It's okay to dream dreams about your future. You just have to make sure your heart is set in the right place or your dreams will take you in the wrong direction. And Proverbs 16.3 says, Commit your way to the Lord and your plans will be established. That's an amazing verse. If, if I just commit my ways To the Lord, God will establish my plans as long as my heart is set on Him and I'm heading in the right direction. This Korahite Levite, he was facing a huge valley, and and he writes here in verses 5, he says, Blessed are those whose strength is in you, whose heart are set on the pilgrimage. Those are the big two takeaways about how you get strong and stay stronger. Two huge things in this passage that will give you strength if you apply them to your life. Two things, see, you see, faith doesn't make us weak. Faith is not a crutch for the weak. Faith empowers you to face and walk through anything. And right here in these two, this, these verses are these two such important things. One is where are you sourcing your strength from? And two, where is your heart set? The psalmist, he was pulling his strength externally from his relationship with God by remembering who God was, by remembering those moments that he felt close to God, by remembering the the best parts of his experience on his journey with God. And he was pulling strength from that. And if you need strength, all you have to do is tap into God, and it's as easy as remembering God and what he's done in your life. And if you don't have history with God, it's just about thinking about him, reflecting on who he is, who he might be, searching for the truth of who God is, and you will find yourself strengthened without lifting a weight. The second thing, big thing in this passage, is to set your heart on the pilgrimage to set your heart on the journey God has for you, to make sure that your heart is in the right place. Love the Lord your God is the greatest commandment. With all your heart, soul, and strength, love Him with everything you have. It's just setting your heart. And and the, the passage says that as these two things happen, you walk through the valley of Baca and some crazy stuff goes down. Now this valley of Baca actually literally means the place of weeping. The, the place of, we all have places of weeping in our life, a valley that is dry and desolate like a wasteland. We all have those places and spaces on our journey that just aren't fun to walk through and they don't feel like they can give us anything. They don't encourage us. They just pull us down and we just want to curl up in a ball in the shower and just cry and weep. And not me, you know, I'm just saying some people. (laughs) But we all have these valleys we have to walk through. This valley of Baca, and he says this, when when your strength is coming from God and when your heart's in the right place, listen, as they pass through the valley of Baca, as they, as they walk through the hardest stuff in life, as you walk through the dry spaces in your relationship where you forget why you're even in a relationship with this person, 
As you walk through those dry and desolate spaces at work, when it feels like your job is meaningless and and nobody likes you, when you walk through those dry places in your own mind and heart where you feel the weight of sadness and depression, where you're wondering if your life has purpose and meaning, when you're struggling with your anxiety and fear, when you're walking through those dry places we all face and you're pulling your strength from God, and your heart's set in the right place, springs pop up, and autumn rains cover it with pools. This is absolutely incredible because of the first word in that section of that verse. They make. They. Those, it's it's not even that God, He does it through us. It says, they make. Those people who are pulling strength from God and whose hearts are set on them, when they walk through the toughest stuff in life, those people make it rain. Like, make it rain. Like, make it, like, make it, I don't know, like, make it rain. Good stuff. Good stuff. Come on. They make it rain. They bring life to the driest, most desolate places. In this world, you all, you, when you're pulling strength, when your heart's there, you bring life everywhere you walk. Not only do you bring life through the toughest stuff in in this world, you change the valleys, it says. The valleys are changed. You make it rain. You bring life and the pools cover The dry places, these pools, they last well past the times you walk by. You see, when you are walking through life with your strength found in God and your heart in the right place, you bring life everywhere you go. You leave pools of hope so that even after you've walked through those hard places, other people still find hope and life by how you've changed the valley. That is so, so crazy to me. Most people, they walk through life and the valley changes them. But you, through your faith, through your strength, through your courage to just take some steps through the tough stuff, depending on God and focused on Him, You change the valley and you bring hope and life everywhere you go. Chew on that. Not only that, but it says they go from strength to strength till each appears before God. You see, the strong get stronger. You want to know how to be a stronger person in life, to have a stronger faith, to have a stronger marriage, to have a stronger outlook, to, have, to be a stronger friend, to be a stronger grandparent, to, to be a stronger tent maker. You want to know how to be stronger? Just make sure your heart is in the right place and outsource your strength from the one who never fails. That's why he could say at the end of this passage, this is better. This is better as one day in your courts than a day anywhere else. I'd rather be the doorkeeper of the house of God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. He says, this is better for, that word for is the, is the because. This is better. My faith is better. Doing life with God is better because God is a sun and a shield. He brings me warmth in life. He protects me from the circumstances. He protects me from the danger. He watches over me. And He bestows favor and honor. No good thing does He withhold from those whose walk is blameless. So, how do you go from strong to stronger? Make sure you're starting your journey. The right journey. Headed in the right direction towards God and relationship with Him. That's a journey that starts with a profession of faith. 
In Romans 10, 9 and 10, it says you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth. It's amazing to me how sometimes I can say something in my heart, but it it doesn't feel real. I'm not locked into it until I express it with my mouth. You, You believe in your heart and you express it with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and you give him your life and it starts this incredible journey heading in the right direction and the direction you're heading in changes everything. And if you're on that journey, be encouraged. Don't stop. Use the challenges and the obstacles you face to hit pause. See if your heart's set in the right place. See if you're pulling strength from the right place. Realign your mind and your heart with God and you will change the valleys you walk through. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for this morning and the opportunity we have to kind of gather together here. We thank you that no matter what we face, we can go from strong to stronger. That we find our strength in you, it, it builds in us. It's easy to stop when life gets hard and when we hit obstacles, which help us to use those obstacles to Make sure our head's in the right place and our heart's in the right place. To make sure our dreams are lining up with the direction you want to take us. Would you help us to walk through the obstacles in a way that changes the valleys we go through. That brings life and that spreads life to others as they walk through valleys themselves. We thank you for being a God who loves us and invites us into a relationship with you. And if anybody hasn't started that journey in the right direction, I pray right now that they would settle their hearts before you. That they would confess in their hearts that they're broken and lost and a sinner without you, as it says in Romans 3.23. And that because of that, we all deserve death, as it says in Romans 6.23. But that you have come to give us life and life to the full. And that just by confessing and believing in our hearts that you are who you say you are, that you've done what you've said you've done, and confessing that with our mouth, we're saved from ourselves, from our circumstances, from our own broken hearts. We thank you that this journey, while it's not always easy, is amazing that you keep showing up in new ways and doing incredible stuff for us. Keep our intention, keep our hearts fixed on you, and give us courage to walk through whatever it is we face. In Jesus' name, amen.